Well, guys, Jungle Beats giving you another review of The Weeknd's concert. One of my favorite artists, so I'm, I was really excited to see him. Bring the love, baby, I can bring my shame. Bring the drugs, baby, I can bring my pain. I got my heart right here. I got my right here. Bring the drugs, baby, I can bring the game. Bring your love, baby, I can bring you pain. Oh, baby, that's my mom. He's never been to Melbourne, Australia. If you attended the concert, definitely Watch this, comment below, tell us your thoughts. If you've been to any weekend performance, also do that. Love to hear what like, people in Canada and Toronto, uh, their experience is like. Uh, I went to the concert. Mans did it. I, I, yeah, no. But just to give you context on why he's silent or why he doesn't chime in. Um, early entry ticket, waited there all day, was the third person in line. So guys, it's uh, just after 9 a.m. Got about 10 hours to go to wait for this weekend concert to start. I want to make sure I'm front row. So I thought, why not kill some time by watching them uh, take some of the, the set out of the touring truck. All right, so we got a lot going on right now. Ooh, um, people beat you? Hey? There's bigger fans than you yeah, that beat you? Yeah, one person got there, at, two people got there at 8 a.m., a couple, and I got there at uh, 9.30. Um, that was all great. Take three. I'm third in line. And uh, we'll still wait. Here we go. Here we go. Openers were Little Panda, great DJ. I fuck with Little Panda. Hey, if you're watching Little Panda, dope set, man. Really dope. I'd check him out if you guys like like DJ sets. Um, he had like live drums and stuff, electronic drum kit. It was great. Uh, then we had Nav. <laughs> no, thank you. And then yeah, we had. That's fucking terrible. And then we have French Montana. Oh God, really? We had like a 45 minute sense by French Montana. Oh. His security guard was on the side of the stage. French Montana had a fucking big ass security guard on steroids and shit, right? And he was just standing on the edge of the stage. He had like four other people on his stage. His little brother was like, it was kind of Why the weekend have Nav and French out of all the people that could be supporting? Oh, sorry, bro. They would have sucked waiting for the weekend to come on. Well, yeah. Nav's, what I learned about Nav, every song's the same tone, every song's the same cadence, there's yeah. nothing really creative. I don't want to be disrespectful, I'm like, to me... It, He's a guy that just happened to get famous off of one track or one feature, somewhere. and then everyone just hyped him up, and then he got all this fucking shit behind him, and it sounds exactly the fucking same. But if we go to The weekend, and if you see the, our Instagram, you'd know, you see the review there, you see the photos there, right? The crowd was nuts. Super loud, one of the loudest crowds I've ever heard, right? They were just, he'd never been here, right? So Die Hard fans are at this concert, even mm -hmm. though it didn't sell out, which means that he doesn't have a huge amount of fans, as we thought. All right, he opens up with Starboy. Um, he walks out. It's like surreal. When you see this artist, like someone you've been following for years, like this, this moment was surreal. One of my favorite artists. I'm like, holy shit, he's real. How was his hair? Oh, it was great. Was it still oh, short? He was wearing a cap, then he took it off, and he was like... Is that why you're wearing a cap? Be honest. Ah... Uh, no, I'm wearing it because I got this from J. Cole. I got this from The Weeknd. Ah, that's good. But, but he influences my, my fashion. Definitely, man. He's a fashionable dude. Uh, he did most of his songs from Starboy. If you were there, you would know. Um, now, I say, unfortunately, but then I realize it makes sense. It's a Starboy tour mm. that's literally in the title. He only did two songs from Trilogy, from all these mixtapes. He did two. Can I guess what they were? Sure. Wicked Games? Yes. And House of Balloons. No. Henry House of Balloons? No. Wow. The morning. Like a 
Drogovic song. Now they were in the middle. The crowd went I'm, fucking I'm nuts. I'm just glad they did Wicked Games. Cause that's yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, it's one of his biggest. Mm. crowd went nuts when he did that. But we were pretty disappointed to hear only two from something that put him on the map. So highly acclaimed. Did he do anything from Kissland? Zero. See, I feel like Kissland has some good songs. Nothing. Yeah, I don't think he was a big fan of the album. I'm guessing he did a fair bit from Beauty Behind the Madness. Yeah, he did like a In the Night, Earned It, oh, fuck Angel. I hate in the Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an angel. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Won't love you till you take me back in my door. I know these, my girl. It's the only song I hate on that album. <laughs> He even got French Montana on for Unforgettable, oh. which is confusing because French Montana did Unforgettable in his set. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a break for the weekend. Like he got a three minute break to just chill, right? He did Starboy, Party Monster, Reminder, Six Feet Under, Low Life, Might Not, Sidewalks, Crew Love, Often. The first nine tracks, really great, great energy, like got us going, right? He did Acquainted. Or nah was fucking sexy, the red lights and shit were lowering down. Tell your friends, die for you. Oh, go tell your friends about it. Angel mm. and um, Secrets with Can't Feel My Face. Secrets, my favorite track of the album. Yeah. I fucking love Secrets. And dun, 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 dun. My oh. love, my love. Oh. It's just the bounce to it, man. It's got like an 80s bounce. I fucking love it. You did I Feel It Coming? Oh. The outro track? Yeah, I feel it. And then everyone's like, you didn't do the hills. So he's of course he's gonna do the hills for the encore. Encore, yeah. You said keep up business on the bottom. I'm just trying to get you at the Cause you look even better than the I can find your house and he's a driving through the gated present. About encores, artists need to get better at doing encores properly. Like, I don't know their attentions, but like, what's the point of walking off the stage if you're gonna walk directly back? J. Cole did the same thing, but J. Cole admitted, I know, yeah, I should have done this one better. I know you guys didn't think I was actually leaving. You know, I don't know. I feel like artists could do these encores much better, make us actually think they're leaving. What's the thing? Well, you know what's the thing? If I was an artist, I wouldn't do encores. I'd only go back on if I felt like I want to go back on. I don't, I don't like the idea of an artist being like, oh, People pay this much money for a concert. Oh, they feel like they should get an encore because every fucking concert has an encore. Right. Fuck no. If you don't think that they deserve an encore because they didn't react good to you, don't go fucking back on. Make them, make, let the fucking crowd make you feel like they've earned it, like they want you, like you feel like you're wanted, you want to give them what they want. I fucking love that. That's what I'd want to be like. Don't fucking go back on just because you feel you just, you have to give it to them. Like, oh, I have to because that's how things work now. Fuck no. There's a reason it's called an encore. Right, you just disrespect the whole title of Encore. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That's, that's how I feel. I, I, I think it's fucking annoying how it's got to the stage in music where it's an expected thing. Right. Like, it's part of the set list. Oh, yeah. Thing. If I go to a concert and they go and they're chanting for an Encore and they don't come back on and people start booing, fuck the crowd. If he doesn't want to come back on, he's done his time. He doesn't want to fucking come back on. The Encore should be extra, unpaid. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what... The, well, that's what it is. It's, yeah. the, it's the artist being like, the fans that earn this shit. Right. Like, I feel like doing this because I'm enjoying myself. Like, right. If they don't want to go back on, there's a reason they don't want to go back on, and you respect that. The don't passion. start fucking booing them, because like, oh, every you artist had that does this. Some people boo. Fuck yeah. Or who? It was fucking um, it was one I went to last year. I gotta remember who it is. A male or female? It was a male. Group or individual? Individual, I think. Uh, I'll try and remember it, but like, yeah, right. he he went off, and then like everyone was chanting, just didn't come back on, and that was it. Right. Yeah. Fair did, did Vince Staples do an encore? 
can't remember. I don't think he did. Blue, no, he finished blue suede and he was done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Vince Staples didn't have an encore. I think so. And if everyone wanted an encore, he didn't. Then we were texting, remember? So that's that's an example. But no one was willing for that one. Um, oh no, that's right. Because all the bodyguards at the front were all just like, no, 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 no. He's done. He's done. He's done. But anyway, continue because we have got no one's time left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all in all, man, seeing one of my favorite artists was incredible. Um, I think I'm slightly biased because I, he's one of my favorite, and I put him on a higher pedestal. Mm-hmm. Um, to be critical, I guess. Oh, first of all, the visuals were great. The big triangle lighting was great. It got, went up and down. It was. I loved how the, that aesthetic changed, and that was not just stagnant. Um, the audio was great, uh, meaning being front row didn't affect it. Wasn't too loud. Wasn't too low. Wasn't pitched too high or low. Frequency was great. Um, audio check. Visuals check. Abel's interaction could have been better. Wasn't on the level of Drake. Um, and I do compare. I will compare because the bar changes when you go to other concerts. Your standards change for what you expect. Mm-hmm. So my expectations or my standards and guidelines, for lack of better words, are going to be they're going to change. It's like uh, Paul McCartney just played in Melbourne. Mm. Seventy-five years old. Mm. I got a friend that went. He did a over three-hour set and did over 40, 50 tracks. He did a three-hour set. He's seventy-five years old. And he did over three hours. Step your fucking shit up, you. That artists. is that is. Passion. Yes. He only had to do an hour and a half set and he did three hours. They're gonna step their shit up, bro. And you know what? Because he's obviously from the Beatles, he had a long career. So he did probably 50, 50, 60 songs. Like, didn't obviously do them all, but did like, but he, his, his discography is that big that they're probably all hits that people know him. And I had people come back home and they're just like, amazing. Wow. To see someone of that age with that much passion. That's great. And a lot of talking with the audience as well. A lot of like just thank yous and like going over his career. Like, I was like, fuck, man, for a guy that's nearly 80 to give a performance like that. Fuck, man. That's fucking crazy. The weekend was great. The crowd loved him. I loved him. I can't wait till he comes back. I want to see a trilogy-only tour. That would be amazing. Um, Where he just does music from the mixtapes. This will be a top five concert for me. Um, There wasn't much that went wrong. There wasn't much that I would change. uh, Except the the music selection. But um, energy was good. It was just it was just a quality quality performance. I enjoyed thoroughly. Share your thoughts below. Jungle Beats. Hey. The, the weekend concert review. We'll see you in 2018. For hey. Mick Jenkins, Run the Jewels, and Fifty Cent. <laughs>